Hello everyone, welcome back to the new video. So in this video, we'll be continuing our discussion with the prompt learning methods in natural language processing. So if you're new here, let me just give you a heads up. So this is the third part of the video. I'll link the first one and the second one in the I button as well as in the description. Make sure to check that out first and then jump off to this video. So cool. Let's start with today's topic. So now we'll be talking about multi-prompt learning. So the idea that essentially derives this section is that not every time you'll have a single prompt that kind of gives you a correct output. So it's always better to design multiple prompts that can further improve the accuracy for retrieving the correct answer. So one of the things that you can think of is to create ensembles of prompt, where this idea makes you think again in the bias variance trade-off lines. So yeah, that's the motivation for the prompt ensemble. So they have also mentioned the three points, like you can leverage the complementary advantages of different prompts. Yeah, because each of the prompts will be written in different ways. So each of them is going to bring something new to the table. And also designing a winning prompt will be costly and require significant time. So it's better to have multiple of little suboptimal prompts. The overall impact that they'll create should ideally be better than one single prompt. And then third one is to stabilize the performance, which again is like you don't want the model to be having high variance when tested on unseen data sets. So now we'll be talking about the functions that we can apply from the intermediate outputs on the output that we get from multiple such prompts. So the first one is uniform averaging, which is like the most simple way to combine the results. So if you see this equation, X is the original sentence that you had, and let's take it as, I love this movie. Then you pass it through the ith prompt function, and let's say that converts this into, I love this movie, full stop, I really enjoyed Z it. So let's say this is the transformation that F1 prompt does. Now based on this input to the language model, we see the probability of the word that it puts over here. And we do this over all the K functions that we define and finally take an average, which finally defines the probability of the word Z given the input X. Now here again, you can have an extra step of choosing these K prompt function at the first place. So one of the works by Jiang et al. first filtered their prompts by selecting the top K prompts that achieve highest accuracy on the training set. Okay, so let's say if you first design 10 prompts, individually on training set. And then when you evaluated these prompts, you found, let's say top four to be performing the best. So now in this ensembling, you can just use these four and perform average over them to get the final result for the Z value. But as expected, the uniform averaging will have its own demerits because you might always have certain prompts that are really performant compared to others. So for that matter, we assign weight to each of the prompts while doing the final aggregation, which we call as weighted averaging. So under this, we give, let's say, W1 for prompt 1, W2 for prompt 2, and let's say W3 for prompt 3. We pass each of them through this function F of summing all of these up divided by W1 plus W2 plus W3. So this way we kind of skew our final score for the generated answer towards the prompt that has higher weightage. Okay. For example, some of the latest work by Quinn and Isner introduced a data-dependent weighing strategy where the probability of an input appearing in the prompt is considered as the weight for that prompt. So for example, if you have a prompt 1 and input sample x, you fill the slot of p1 where the x is supposed to occur along with other words that make up that entire prompt and you'll have some z value that the model has to predict. So one of the ways to get the probability of the input sample is to get the score that your language model gives for this sequence. The higher the score that you have, which means the higher the likelihood you have, then the chances are that something around this structure already exists in your training data. Whereas if you input X in let's say template number P2, which is really absurd and doesn't make sense, the score for this would be really high compared to the P1 and X combination. The lower the score you have, the better the weight that you can give to that particular template. Then some works give the weight for each prompt, which is proportional to the accuracy on the training set. So which is again about, let's say you have P1, P2, P3, you test accuracy of each of the prompts on the training set. And then based on how many correct answers you have out of how many you tested, you can give that proportion of weight to each of these prompts. So these are kind of like data dependent based on the data on which the language model is trained. You're trying to essentially assign some prior to these prompts. Then there are also works that try to learn weight for each of these prompts by maximizing the probability of the target output over the training data. So which essentially means you're learning a distribution over the prompts as well. So let's say if you had T prompts, the equation would look something like this, I equal to one to T. You have log 
of probability of some answer y given the input sample x and the prompt ti and then multiplied by 1 upon t. So yeah, this is the typical equation of average that you do across multiple prompts, that kind of ensemble. So over here, you don't have any mechanism of giving weight to each of these prompts. So the idea is to learn an extra parameter theta that is subscripted by i, which means you have theta for every prompt and that way you kind of weight it with again the same overall idea that you want to maximize the y value based on these three things. Okay. Then you have the next one, which is majority voting, which again is typical to what you already know happens in let's say random forest when you're trying to do a classification. Whatever the majority says is what you assign the final label to that sample. Then you have knowledge distillation, where one of the works in 2020 trained a separate model for each of these manually created template and answer pair. For example, you have prom P1, you have prom P2, you have prom P3, and each of them are essentially solving the same task of sentiment classification, let's say, but the way they are designed could be very different. And obviously for every input sample, once you pass it through this template, it will also have a Y value. And based on the number of samples you have, you'll have Y n values for each of these templates. Now the idea is to use the pre-trained language model, let's say M, use this data to fine tune this based on the actual label, which you already had, back propagate and fine tune this M model. Now this M model is very much specific to kind of model the input that looks based on the formatting of the prompt P1. So let's call this as MP1. And similarly, you'll have a model MP2 and MP3. So once you have fine tuned all of these language models on their specific prompts, you use some unlabeled data set and annotate that based on the predictions from each of these MP1, MP2 and MP3 using some ensemble. Now, again, this could be majority voting. If it's a classification, you can talk about averaging, you can talk about weighted averaging, all sorts of things. And now you can have a final model that you train on that specific data set. And the idea is since you're using multiple models and coming up with one annotation per sample, you're using the power from all these somewhere down the line, which is acquired by the final model that you train on that annotated data set. So yeah, that's about knowledge distillation. Then we have prompt ensembling for text generation. So text generation again is a task of generating sequences, unlike doing a classification where you just have to generate one token, so to say. Here during text generation at any time T, the word that you want to generate depends on the words that you have generated so far. So one of those simple ways to do ensemble over here is to generate output based on the ensemble probability for next word in the answer sequence. So if you see this equation, X is the input sample that we have. Z less than T corresponds to the number of tokens that you have generated in the Z space till time T. F prompt I is the ith prompt function. And based on the ith prompt function for a given input and the words that you have generated so far, what should be the tth output? And every tth output is nothing but an average across all k prompt functions that you have designed. So for example, let's say these are the words that you already had. This was still less than t. You had some input sample x and prompt p. So based on this, this and this, the word that you generate over here, let's say the first prompt says for word W1, W2 and W3, this is the distribution that you have, 0.1. And let's say for prompt two, W1 has 0.2, W2 has 0.5, W3 has 0.3. And similarly for multiple prompts, then you come up with the average probability for every word and whichever scores the highest is the word that you choose at this point. So that's one of the ways to how you can use ensembling while doing the text generation. Okay. Also one of the works in 2020, essentially train a separate model for each of the prompts, which means they are kind of fine tuning language model for every prompt, which again is similar to the knowledge distillation part. And I think the authors, yeah, so authors are also same. So this is again one of the works that they released under the same idea where you fine tune a language model for every specific prompt. So let's say if there are three prompts, you'll have three models. Then clearly storing these models in memory is not feasible because of their size. So the idea is to first use each of these models to decode a sequence. Let's say we had three models, so we'll get three Z sequence that we have. Then we calculate the likelihood for every sequence using each of these models. You take an average of this, you take an average of this, you again take an average of this. 
whichever scores the highest is considered as the final generated sequence so yeah that's about you kind of do it in a offline setting as well so that was about prompt ensembling now talking about prompt augmentation which essentially goes in the direction of few short inference so for example if a model is supposed to answer the z value in this sentence it's always better to give it some examples that resemble the same intent and probably under the same constructs so for example you can give it few more examples like great britain's capital is london japan's capital is tokyo and now when you give it china's capital is what then the chances are very high precursor examples that you have given the probability of what it outputs at this position increases so yeah that's the idea of prompt augmentation now the two basic questions that make it really challenging is defining the sample order which is like how do you choose which example to give first before asking for any questions so for example do you want to give great britain's capital is london as a first example or japan's capital is tokyo as a first example so that is what we want to order which is under the sample ordering and then you have sample selection like which are those examples that are really effective and are likely to give higher accuracy when we ask for test sample so that again is the second question so there has been a research around these two questions as well so if we talk about sample selection first so one of the works in 2021 uses sentence embeddings to sample example that are close to the input in the embedding space so yeah again the idea is to find semantically similar samples to what you are going to test on so that's one of the ways whereas mishra et al in 2021 provided both positive samples and negative samples to give model a hint to what not to output as well so yeah that's again a step to increase the generalization capability of these models because you are telling them what you should be outputting and what not so yeah now the negative samples of here could be devised in multiple ways you can give something that is out of the box and doesn't even resembles the input sample that you are going to test on or you can give a negated version of the similar input sentence so something of that sort can be devised and the second one is sample ordering so one of the very recent works by lu et al found that the order in which you present your samples play a very important role in the model performance and they propose an entropy based method to score different candidate permutations so which could be something like this let's say you have four prompts p1 p2 p3 and p4 then you have a test sentence you pass it through your language model and you get some prediction pp1 now you can permute this p1 to p4 let's say now you can have p4 p3 p1 and p2 again you have the test sentence you pass it through the language model you get pp2 and similarly based on how many permutations you will have you have all such y values so essentially if it's a classification task you'll be getting a probability across three classes as an output of your language model and since you'll also be having the actual label y you can calculate the cross entropy loss for every permutation and eventually assign that score to that permutation and use it for finalizing the ordering then talking about prompt composition here the idea builds on top of the task that may have layered structure of task to be solved first which could be more fundamental in nature so for example if you consider the task of relation extraction as we can see in this figure if this is the actual input that we have google became a subsidiary of alphabet so at the end of the day the main thing that we want to predict is the relation between google and alphabet but if you talk about the more fundamental task we would also like to know what google is what alphabet is and then probably the relation between these two entities so that's what this sub prompt 1 sub prompt 2 and sub prompt 3 correspond to here you will be kind of predicting firm let's say here you might again say firm or company something of that sort and prompt 3 essentially it focuses on getting the relation so now if you combine these three sub prompts this could be the final prompt that you can use where you'll also be predicting this this and this so yeah that is about prompt composition where you start off with multiple sub prompts compose them to form one big prompt you also have the other way around which is prompt decomposition which is like you have one big prompt you convert them into multiple sub prompts so for example if your input sample is mike went to new york yesterday and the task here is to do entity detection so you might want to design a prompt that looks something like this but again here the problem is like it's too long you might have multiple mass token if the input sentence is pretty long all of that can happen so it's better to divide that into sub prompts and solve each of them individually so you can have let's like, sub prompt as mike 
is dash entity type new york is dash entity type so now both of them can be separately used to answer entity value for each of these entities so yeah that's prompt decomposition essentially so pictorially they have also defined the prompt augmentation which we have anyway seen which is like a few short learning thing for example if the input is add two numbers six and eight now if your prompt is let's say just this much so it could be possible that the single prompt is not enough to trigger those weights to get this correct answer instead you give some more examples and then eventually give the test sentence so that was about prompt augmentation and the first one which we saw which was prompt ensemble where let's say subject is china relation is is capital so one of the prompts could be china's capital is other could be mask is the capital of china then capital of china is so yeah these are a couple of prompts that you can kind of design and then based on let's say maximum voting or averaging something of sort to merge the results from each of these predictions so yeah that was about multi prompt learning so now they start with the new topic which i'll leave for the next video so if you like such content make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel also don't forget to share it across with your friends to whosoever is interested in such content i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care